check this out over here, bro. Yeah. There's this shack, right? Made out of corrugated tin, yeah. all painted blue, and like has these different psychedelic patterns on the side of it. Yeah, bluish psychedelic thing. Clearly, it's mushrooms speaking here. And then you come over yeah. to this uh, mural, and it becomes more explicit. And we have a dog, we have a human being, and we have the mushroom here. Yep. But uh, but then we jump over here, and we've got the UFOs. And I guess this is like the man in the moon, or what do you think? Yeah, I think that might be right. Yeah. yeah. Top hat. Moon. Top hat. Another UFO. Makes sense. The UFO flying around the moon or the planet. It might be a different planet. And now we're coming into like a psychedelic bird spirit, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, what is that? Oh, I'm not sure. Is that a dove or a rooster? No, it's not a rooster, man. It doesn't have a thingy on it. Roosters have the red thing on it. And roosters don't have a beak like that. Doves don't have that. that, makes sense, that? No, but that may be because the bird's tripping or it's the <laughs> spirit of tripping or something like that, right? Yeah. So, but he's clearly thinking, I think these are like thought patterns and stuff, right? That are emanating yep, here. Yep. This is a, more too. of a grid, a matrix of yeah. the universe kind of thing that's going on here. This is there's some kind of knowledge, obviously, encoded in these symbols here. Yeah. And, uh, and then this gets, you know, kind of really interesting over here. Um, hold on. Uh, because it starts feeling a little bit more traditional to me, right? These feel like more traditional Mexican kind of patterns to me. We get into spirals. And then, of course, we know that the whole connection to the world of the dead is something that it lives in Mexico is celebrated in culture in different kinds of ways. So not surprising for us to come and see a, a skull. I love how this um, mural is, is, is built as part of a hallway or, or there's another building right next to it. You know, it's not like it's it's a huge view of, of a lot of people. No, I, th I think you know, somebody who was <laughs> staying in that little blue house, whoever it was that was staying in that little blue house, <laughs> tripping balls, and they had some paint, and they came out and they painted, town. I'm sure. Yeah. Look, man, yeah. okay. it looks like it's it pretty clear what happened here. Down to the curtain. Right? Yeah. If you have the ability to reconstruct a psychedelic experience, I would say definitely. That was how it happened. So, yeah. So this is, you know, this is the, sp the spots where there's always some freedom in the world now. And not always, but if there is some freedom, you frequently find it here, way up in the mountains, uh, where the geography limits the reach of authority. Mm -hmm. And you find these pockets of freedom, these pockets of places where people have retained their community, where they've retained their culture and where they've retained the ability to grow this ancient plant all, all through these years. And if what we hear about the people who have been growing cannabis in this part of the Sierra is true, they've been growing it here for centuries and centuries and centuries. Um, everybody, all the grandmothers who are around now talk about learning how to make cannabis medicines from their grandmothers. So we don't know yet whether it was the Spanish or the Chinese, yeah. where the first cannabis seeds came to this territory from, so. Well, but we do know as Americans that most of us, our can cannabis heritage is connected to Mexico in many ways, and so it's fun to be able to retrace those roots up here and really looking forward to seeing more. Yeah. The mystery unfolds. 